Good morning and welcome everyone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord of Advent tells us to be watchful for his coming, keeping our lamps lit and our hearts clean. Therefore, let us confess to the Lord. Most merciful God, We prepare our hearts for the coming of your Son, confessing our sins, confessing our attraction to a godless world that does not know Christ. Forgive our sins, cleanse our hearts, and keep us faithful for the promised coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Greatly rejoice in the Lord, for he clothes us with garments of salvation and covers us with robes of righteousness. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. In the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry. And I said, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. Go up to a high mountain, O Zion. Herald the good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem. Herald the good news. Lift it up. Fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. 
He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament reading is from 2 Peter chapter 3. But do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar, and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved, and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness prevails. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish, and at peace. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John appeared baptizing in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt around his waist and he ate locust and wild honey. And he preached saying, after me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith in the words of the uh, second article of the Apostles' Creed, and what does it mean? And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Be seated, please. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, wasn't the last weekend an uh, unexpected, um, <clears throat> well, what can I say? Uh, contact tracing called me on Wednesday after 5 o'clock, and uh, I had to quarantine for the weekend. So if anybody happened to show up uh, Saturday, I'm sorry. 
I tried to get the message out through Facebook and email, and that's about the best I could do. So sometimes these things happen. Um, well, on to our message for this evening, titled Comfort for God's People. Isaiah can be a very fascinating book to study. There's a lot in the book of Isaiah. It contains amazing storylines that are very complex. Now, many of the storylines have wonderful applications to our lives today. In chapter 38 and 39, obviously that's preceding our Old Testament reading today, in that section you'll read about King Hezekiah's illness that brought him face to face with death. Now this is actually very important because it is setting the stage for God's words of comfort that we have in Isaiah chapter 40 verses 1 through 11. So this is the context that God is speaking into. King, he <clears throat> King Hezekiah, who has some illness, and God said, well, your illness is terminal. You should focus on getting your household in order. Wow, that certainly will get a person's attention. Now that sounds like a person that could really use some words of comfort if you have a message like that. It doesn't matter if it was 700 B.C., which was about the time frame that, of Isaiah, or if it's today. When a person is facing death, then they can really use some words of comfort. Here's an amazing thing from this account in Isaiah chapter 38, verses 2 and 3, it says, Hezekiah turned his face to the wall, and he prayed to the Lord. And he said, Remember, Lord, how I have walked before you faithfully and with wholehearted devotion and have done what is good in your eyes. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. The Lord heard his prayer. And the Lord responded by adding 15 years to his life. Oh, that's a pretty nice gift, isn't it? Added 15 years to his life. But in the answer, the Lord gave him a second promise. Now, the other promise was related to a different type of threat that Hezekiah was facing. Now, this was a threat for the, the country, uh, Judah, it, the, that particular kingdom of Israel. And this had many, many people concerned. The Assyrians from up north were trying to conquer and take over Judah. For that fact, they had set a siege around Jerusalem. How do they get out of this? The Lord promised that he would defend Hezekiah and the city from the Assyrians. External threats can create a lot of stress and anxiety for a person. When a person is facing some type of external threat that could destroy property or people, that can really dramatically change a person's life. And they could really use some words of comfort. So our setting has an internal threat of poor health leading to death and an external threat that could lead to the loss of life and property. Under such circumstances, words of comfort are needed. But if you were to speak words of comfort to somebody facing that type of thing, what would you say? There's an interesting note in Isaiah chapter 39 verse 1. The son of the king of Babylon sent Hezekiah letters and a gift because of his illness and recovery, and he did it by means of envoys. So he sent representatives. He didn't go himself. He had it delivered to Hezekiah. Now, doesn't that sound like a wonderful thing? Send him a nice letter, uh, a card, gifts. All right, that sounds good, doesn't it? And Hezekiah thought, 
This is wonderful. And he welcomed the envoy in and showed him all around. And Hezekiah thought that there would be peace and security in his lifetime. Because you see, the Babylonians were enemies of the Assyrians. And if he had the Babylonians as his friends, they would protect him. Hmm. Peace and security. Isn't that what most people want in their lifetime? To be able to live in peace and security? However, circumstances in this life can change very rapidly. A year ago, who among us thought that in a year we would be having a national pandemic that would have rather strong restrictions and we'd have to be sitting in church with masks on? Anybody? Yeah, not me either. Hmm. Life can change very rapidly. Your health situation can change very quickly. Your external circumstances can change just about as quickly. I remember four years ago, President Donald Trump unexpectedly won the election. Ah, boy, that had things turned a little on the upside down. And boy, were there people upset over that. I couldn't believe the amount of anxiety and distress that people were expressing and experiencing over the fact that he became president. Now, four years later, we've had a very contentious election cycle. And, well, now Joe Biden has won the election and he's president-elect. Political powers change. This is the nature of life in this world. Health circumstances can change. Outward circumstances can change. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11, speaks words of comfort to God's people during very challenging and rapidly changing times. There are several key features or statements in these words of comfort. And I pray that they bring you comfort, but also that they provide you a sense of peace and a sense of security. It's not based on somebody protecting us or some leader stepping up, but rather it's based upon the Lord's action. Our peace and security comes from him. First, it says, speak tenderly that the battle is ended and you will receive double from the Lord's hand. That is, the Lord's grace is greater than any sin and it is greater than any obstacle that you face, any outside threat. His grace is greater than all of that. So relax and trust in the Lord. Second, the Lord has sent a messenger to prepare the way of the Lord. A messenger has been sent by God. And it says in here that there's going to be some gaps that need filled in. We've got a little bit of change that needs to take place to our terrain. Some obstacles need to be removed. Rough places need to be smoothed over. Some clearing, cleaning up needs to be done. If things are a mess, some cleanup is in order. We know that this is really talking about John the Baptist, and it's a prophecy about him as he comes in the wilderness preparing the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. But think about what did he preach? Repentance. You want to experience comfort and peace and security? Then many times it's important that we go through a time of self-reflection and repentance and adjustments. That is, that we have sorrow for our, any sins that we've committed or sins that we have or things that we have failed to do that God calls sins of omission. Those things that you did or things that you failed to do, it's important that we cleanse our heart. 
Third, people are here today and gone tomorrow, but the word of the Lord stands forever. That is one of the greatest promises here in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. The word of the Lord stands forever. Nations indeed rise and fall. You study history, you're going to see that over and over again. Leaders come and leaders go. Diseases wreck havoc, and over time they fade. Through it all, the Lord and his word stands forever. You want comfort, peace, and security? Then don't get too caught up in who is in charge or who is in power or what the latest crisis is. It's important that we realize the Lord is the one that's in control and he is the Lord of our life. Trust in the Lord and you will experience comfort, peace, and security no matter what the outside circumstances may be. Fourth, Lift up your voice with good news. Behold, your God is here and with you. Look to Jesus and see the might of the Lord. Even better, look to the Lord and see the reward that he has brought for you. Place your faith in him, and he is going to give you double. I love that. He's going to give you double grace. Forgiveness. In eternal inheritance, he's going to give you more than you ever deserve. And it is beautiful, the blessings that the Lord has prepared for you. You want to know what the heart of your God is like? We get a picture of it in here. That he cares for his people like a shepherd cares for his sheep. Your God holds you in his arms. Your God carries you in his bosom. Now, I prefer the way the NIV has that particular part stated. It says, he carries you close to his heart. I like that. God carries you close to his heart. (laughs) Isn't that a comforting thought? Jesus carries you close to his heart. After all, isn't that where we carry people that are important to us? Meredith, I bet your, your mom kind of gives you a hug every now and then, doesn't she? She's like, well, no. Or, yeah, well, mom just took care of that. I know your grandma does. Oh, did I just embarrass you? You're welcome. It, it's part of my job. She's like, oh, I need to change your job, pastor. <laughs> But see, those that we love, that's what we do. We carry them close to our heart because they're important to us. And that's what God does for us because we're important to him. I appreciate knowing and hearing during challenging circumstances that Jesus is carrying me and all of us close to his heart. The last point about the heart of Jesus He gently leads those who have children. Jesus cares about children, but he also cares about their parents. Being a parent today with children at home has to be extremely challenging. In many cases, they're having to work from home, and they're having to teach their children at home. As much as we have some in-person learning, some of it's still at home, we got hybrid models going on. Balancing the demands of life is very difficult with our circumstances today. And those of you that are grandparents and you have the privilege and you take the time to help your children out by babysitting your grandchildren, thank you. It's very important. It's a wonderful gift, not only to your children, but to your grandchildren. Balancing these demands in life can be very difficult. But I want to remind you this, that the Lord notices. So keep the faith. Lean on the Lord to lead you and to strengthen you. Pray for him to 
help you to be able to turn whatever those rough places are into smooth roads. Have the Lord lead you in doing that. In all things, remember, the word of our God stands forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, our times, our circumstances today can be greatly challenging with COVID-19 and so many other situations. We thank you, Lord, for your words of comfort that you spoke to King Hezekiah through Isaiah, that you also speak to us today. You speak words of comfort reminding us of your promises that you've given to us that you have a heart of care and compassion, that you've sent Jesus Christ into this world, you've sent people to prepare the way to proclaim the message, you've called us to be those people as well, to be high on the mountain, to find those opportunities where we can proclaim the good news, that you are a God of love and compassion, that you have forgiveness for us that your word stands forever. Help us, Lord, to be at peace and to rest securely in all that you provide for us today and in the future. Lord, we lift up to you our preschool and the work that is being done with, uh, by our teacher, Diana Cooper, and our aide, Dawn Della Valley, with the children that are enrolled. We thank you for their faithful service. And Lord, we lift up to you all of those that we have on our health concern list. Mike Phillips, Dick Dewar, Mike O'Connor, Leroy Profrock, Nina Wood, John Martinez, Philip James, Sandy Haynes, Vicki Weiss, Chris Finley, Marcia Neary, Kurt Yeager, Joe Della Valley, Alan Volker, Amelia Della Valley, Nelson Goodrich, Ruth Hacker, John Eckel, Laura Russell, Mary Besock, Tammy Starr, Ellie Crouch, Emily Russell, Bruce Herman, Phyllis Phillips, Jen Calandra, Laura Phillips, Cloyd and Shirley Snyder, Ron Ball, Emily Crane, John Hacker Jr., Eugene Zem, Marlene Sibyl, Barb Young, Charlotte Lyons, James Lort, Sharon Monti, Bernard Couturier, Pat Wires, Ed Pilot, Gerald Goodrich, John Osetkowski, Audrey Hawthorne, Sam Held, and we lift up to you anyone else that we have in our hearts and minds today. We place them into your hands, Lord, and we ask you to provide for them each day that which they need for that day. We thank you for the health care workers and the family and friends that provide support and encouragement and put their skills to great use to bring healing. We ask you to bless them all in the work that they do. And Lord, we are nearing that day where we have the anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor, this year celebrating the 79th anniversary or remembering the 79th anniversary. Whenever I think of a time like that, my heart breaks, and I experience great sorrow for the loss of life. We thank you, Lord, for the gift that you've given to us of forgiveness and new life in Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that we would remember all times of struggle within this country and that we may use it as a time of learning and growth. We thank you, Lord, for all of the men and women who serve in our military, 
who put their life on the line each and every day. We ask you, Lord, to keep them safe. We pray for our country. We ask that there be a smooth transition of leadership. We ask you, Lord, to provide wisdom to those that are in leadership both now and in the near future to lead us and guide us in the healthiest way possible through the challenges that we face today. We pray all of this as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to ask that you be seated at this point. Um, a standard offering announcement, we've got our plates up front here or in the back. Uh, you can also mail your offering into the church or use one of the two online giving options at our website, stmarknt.org. And I just want to thank you for your continual support for this ministry uh, so that we can continue to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ and be here to support and encourage one another during these challenging times. Um, hopefully we don't have another reoccurrence of last weekend where I have to quarantine again. This is crazy. Um, it certainly. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us all please rise. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for coming to us through the sacrament of this Holy Supper. May your presence in our lives give us patience and peace in this holy season and make us eager for your return when you will bring all the faithful into your heavenly kingdom where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In all your Advent preparations, Remain watchful with your eyes on Jesus, and may the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. We close singing, From heaven above to earth I come.